Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and today I'm gonna to give you five tips to take your bird photography from meh to yeah, right after this. This video is gonna be a hybrid. I, I do these quick thoughts videos and I also do some uh, improve your photography videos. I'm gonna put this in both playlists because it's a little bit of a combination of each. I'm gonna give you five ways to improve your bird photography. And if you follow these five, I guarantee you, you'll have better success out in the field. Let's get to number five. One piece of advice I would give to everybody is establish some sort of feedback loop. And what I mean by this is a mentorship or a community where you are able to solicit feedback. Now, it doesn't matter how you choose to do it. For some people, you might be very social and you might be very comfortable saying to a group, hey, let's get together and share ideas and share photographs. For other people, you might not be as comfortable with that and having a paid teacher or mentor might be the way to go. Either way, this will improve your photography greatly. I will tell you this, being open to feedback in general, professionally, as a student, as a hobbyist, being open to feedback will greatly improve any result that you get. The problem is a lot of people just aren't open to it. Now, I know you can think of somebody like this, somebody who says, meh, I'm better than that. I don't need that. Uh, I'm actually thinking of people in my head right now that I just have worked with professionally and even some photographers. Sometimes the mentality is I've been doing this for so long, I'm good. I don't need any help. And I look at somebody sometimes that is doing work for 10 or 20 years and I think it's 10 or 20 years that aren't that good and I hate to be critical, but you know what I'm talking about. I also know people that have been doing it a year or two and who are extremely open-minded and extremely open to feedback and often take on some kind of a mentor or teacher and the results get really, really good. It's not a matter always of how long you've been doing it. Sometimes it's the effort and openness to change and to try new things and experiment and grow that will improve your results. So no matter how you choose to do it, taking a mentor or having some sort of feedback group is really, really important. Now, the route I personally went is I found photographers that were better than me and I invited them into a group chat and we still have that group chat going on. Years later, the members have come and gone but we still do it. We still share ideas and we still talk to each other. And I will tell you, a couple of those photographers are absolutely better photographers than I am. And I love being able to share things with them or ask them questions and finding out their feedback from it. So that's the way I chose to go. I also now mentor other people. So I will tell you, I've gotten tremendous feedback from people that say the, the critical feedback has been instrumental in my improvement and me being able to watch them grow is really, really, really powerful for me. So I'm a teacher at heart. I don't know that everybody knew that, but my trade was actually as a teacher. I no longer do that, but um, I love to teach. I love to coach. I love to instruct. So it's been a very rewarding for me. Regardless of what avenue you choose, I will tell you, be open to feedback and solicit feedback either from a community group, maybe one of those chat groups, or possibly from a professional, a mentor, or a teacher. And I guarantee you, if you're open to the feedback and you find the right person in the right group, it will absolutely improve your bird photography. Number four on this list is really, really important to me. It could actually be number one or two. Focus on composition, understand composition. Now you can do this by real quickly jumping on YouTube, reading a few articles, doesn't take a ton of time. You don't have to go to an art theory class. But understanding basics of composition can be really, really important. And in this group, in this idea of composition, I will also add, make sure to see the frame, the whole frame, the inclusion of everything. I'm going to put some examples over here as I'm talking. You can see what I'm talking about, hopefully in these examples, where the inclusion of habitat, the inclusion of environment, seeing the whole frame really improves these images. When we think about bird photography in the beginning, so when we're taking those meh photos, a lot of times we tend to just overcrop or, or think that bigger is better. After all, we're photographing birds. The more bird there is, the better the image. I actually think the opposite occurs. I think as we get hyper-focused on a subject, we lose the context. And for me, that is really, really important. And I think, I really think if you understand composition better, from your beginning photography and you keep 
this open concept, this open idea about habitat, background, foreground, scale, perspective, if you, if you start to really challenge that, I promise you, I absolutely promise you, if you focus on composition and you see the whole frame, your bird photography is going to get better. Absolutely. Number three on my list was to study behavior. And I'm going to give you a quick example of behavior. And this can be so many different types of behavior. But I, I used to have a red tail hawk that hung around. I, I named him Herman. He was always in the same spot. And I just watch him. I, I got to learn Herman's behavior. Now, he's not there anymore. I went one, uh, two years ago. I went and he wasn't, he was gone. And I was really, really sad. He used to migrate down, hang out on this area for the, for about three or four months. And then he'd fly back north. He was a northern red-tailed hawk. But I got so good at predicting his behavior. I got shots like this. I knew where he was going to go based off of his perch. When he hit this pole, he was going to hunt the direction he was hunting, where he was going to go. I also knew that he, he was out by the road all the time. So me pulling my car over on the side of the road didn't affect him at all. He, he wasn't bothered by him. He didn't get spooked. So he was just performing his natural behavior. I can also tell you that over the years, I've studied the different behavior of different birds and different species behave differently. Some are really curious and friendly. Others are really aggressive. Some are kind of secretive and hidden. And understanding that along with their preferred habitat as a bird photographer is huge. So if I understand the way a bird behaves, and I understand the habitats they prefer, my photography is going to get better because I can maximize the locations and I can set myself up in areas to maximize their behavior. Now, one thing about this, it's going to be hard to study this. I mentioned things like feedback groups, even composition. You can, you can actually study some of that. Behavior is watching. It's observation. Yes, you can learn it from other people, and it might help to have some guides, even some bird-related guides but it's probably just a matter of time. But when you're out there, really, really maximize it. Don't get just focused on taking the photograph. Look around and see how birds are behaving, how they're acting and where they are. And I guarantee you, if you improve your recognition of bird behavior, you're also gonna improve your photography. Number two, and I can't emphasize this enough, learn to edit. There are a lot of people out there in their beginning photography that say, I want to represent what my camera saw. And I can't make this point highly enough. Your camera doesn't see what you saw. Our eyes have a certain average focal length. So it's kind of the equivalent of a lens. Most wildlife photographers, by the way, don't shoot with this lens. So if you say, I want to capture what I saw, your camera's never going to capture that. When you're shooting in a mode called JPEG, this is a compressed, easy to use format. You can put it right from your camera out to the web. Your camera is making is making decisions. It's making decisions on how much color there should be, how much saturation, how much contrast. It's making decisions for you. And what comes out of your JPEG file in an Nikon camera is not going to be the same as Canon and it's not going to be the same as Sony. So a camera will actually never capture the same event the same way all the time. And there's another file format that most professional or, or advanced photographers use called RAW format. Now, if you think you're shooting raw format and it's going to look like what you see, you're completely wrong because raw formats tend to look very washed out. They tend to be very bland. They're actually designed to be edited. So you're never going to maximize your photography if you think that what you captured in your camera will be exactly what you saw with your eyes. And it's probably not even meant to be displayed as it was taken. It's meant to be edited. Now, editing can be very controversial. And it doesn't mean manipulating. So a lot of people say, did you Photoshop that? Well, technically, I Photoshop every image. I take it into Photoshop and I clean up the colors. I clean up the balance. I clean up the exposure. I do all that. It doesn't mean I digitally manipulated it. So even if you're not comfortable with the concept of digital manipulation, removing an imperfection, uh, stretching out a canvas to fill an area, changing the composition uh, digitally, even if you're not comfortable with that, I implore you. If you do not edit your pictures, one of the greatest ways you will improve your photography is learning basics of editing. Regardless of how you do it, pay for somebody, go to a class, go online and learn from YouTube. There are free ways to do this. I would mention mentorships. There's mentorships available. There's teaching classes available. Figure out what works for you, but please do yourself a favor. Learn the basics of editing a photo. And that will include things like composition. It will include things like color, exposure. 
and it doesn't take a ton of time, but do yourself a favor. Just make sure that you edit your pictures before you post them and especially before you make that decision to print them. Now, before I get into the number one way, I want to make a note here. You're going to see a lot of YouTube videos out there that talk about things like improve your bird photography by learning your shutter speed or learning your camera or, or improving your equipment. That is all true. Your gear upgrades will absolutely help. But for some people, that's not a realistic option. You may have the equipment you have, so I don't want to touch on that. I also think as wildlife photographers, we get hyper-focused on settings. Yes, you need to know your settings. Yes, you need to understand your camera. What I'm talking about is the final output. How do you improve, re make real improvement? See, if I learn shutter speed and I learn exposure and I get really good at settings, my images will never get better until I make better photographs. So, yes, I will tell you, understand your camera. That's kind of a given for this quick thoughts video, this educational video. Understanding your camera is essential, but these are things that you can do to really, really improve. And now I want to give you the number one. And this is a big one. No matter how expensive your gear is, no matter how well you understand photography, no matter how many classes you've taken or how many degrees you have, if you don't prioritize light, you will never improve your photography. To me, light is the most important aspect of all photography. And if you understand it, and my, my suggestion here is that you experiment. If you want to improve your bird photography or any type of photography, start to understand light, both in terms of quantity and quality. Understand things like diffuse light, direction of light, tonality of light. Understand what light is. And as you start to experiment, I want you to value it. If I had to give advice one piece of advice for this video, if you just said, I, I don't remember anything Scott talked about today, but I remember he said this, every time I go out, I should think about light. Every time I go out, I should think about light. What is it like? Why am I out there? What direction is it coming from? What's it going to look like? And most importantly, for wildlife photography, am I maximizing the light in terms of quantity and probably more, more importantly, the quality. Now, this concept was so important to me. I did a series on light, and I'm probably going to put some more videos out. These are a little bit longer, 20 or 30 minutes each, but if you have some time and, and you don't get what I'm talking about, I want you to check out my playlist, both on improve your photography, but also on just wildlife photography and light. I think you will find it very, very interesting if you haven't already seen it. And again, I plan on doing more of these videos, so I hope you take advantage of that. And those are my five suggestions on how to improve your bird photography. Of course, there's going to be tons more. And some people may prioritize other things. But I will tell you, if you focus on these five, I can promise you that every aspect of your photography will improve. And I hope you found it valuable. Now, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications so you can see the future videos. And I say it in every video. Let's continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.